M. Fletcher Brown with another artist video blog at Kicks96 Country. Dot com. Our guest today, all the way from Nashville, Tennessee, by way of Indianapolis, Indiana, please welcome Matt Mason to Kicks Country. How are you, Matt? I'm doing great. Thanks all for right, so me. you've been playing and singing since you were a little bitty. Yes, I started uh, in a Pentecostal church at about 11 years old. Um, well, I started singing before then, I guess, in church. You know, you in a Pentecostal church, everybody sings. Mm -hmm. Everybody sings gospel music coming up in that. So I, I grew up singing gospel music. When I was 11, my dad bought me a guitar, and... And I, this old man that was in our church started teaching me how to play. And I would stay, you know, we had, we went to church every night of the week. It seemed like those doors were open. But between Sunday morning service and Sunday night service, uh, this old this old fellow named Carl Downey would stay at church with me and just in between services mm -hmm. and, and sit and work with me on guitar and teach me and stuff. That's a rule, by the way. If you want to be a, a, a great musician, you have to be taught by an old guy. You have to be taught you by an old guy yeah. somewhere. Yeah, He's, I mean, you got to have the old guy in your Hank life. Williams... On you have to get taught <laughs> by an old person how that, to play. That's it. Okay, and it doesn't have to be related to you. I mean, so that's not required. Just find any random old guy and get him to teach you how to play guitar. So, um, did you stay in Indiana? I mean, did was your life just from that moment on scripted for uh, for music, or did you almost it, go another way? It was um, when I first figured out that uh, I'm not a great guitar player by any sense of the word. But when I when I started playing music, I I always dreamed of growing up and. And, and wanting this to be a career and no idea that people actually did this for real as a career. You know, I mean, you see superstars out there on the, on, on the radio and on TV and stuff, but actually as something that, that a kid from, that from Indiana could actually do was, was a far fetched dream, mm -hmm. you know? So to turn that into some form of reality was like, uh, it, it never seemed possible really as a kid. I always wanted to do it, but I didn't think it would actually happen. Mm -hmm. But I still pursued it, you know, with like, that was my, that was my goal. And then if I didn't do that, my, my granddad was a truck driver and I've been fascinated with semi since I was a kid. So I, I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to be a singer or I'm going to drive a truck. So you can do both. <laughs> you can do it's, both. It's entirely possible. <laughs> um, so, uh, let's flash forward. Uh, you leave Indianapolis, you end up in Nashville uh, in 2006. You were in the top 10 of Nashville star. Yes. What season was that? That was season four. Okay. Um, Chris Young won that year. Yeah, okay. So, I, I mean, obviously a lot of listeners are going to know who Chris Young is. Mm -hmm. um, and that was an awesome experience. It was, uh, for me, it was teaching me how to be live on on stage, mm -hmm. you know, for the first time, which I had never never done in the sense of a camera sitting in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, I had played live performances numerous times, but this was a whole new animal going, you go out here and if you screw up, then everybody at home is going to know you screwed up, not just the people not just the 30 yeah. people in the bar, you know, the 30,000 people or 30 million people at home are going to know it too. So, um, it, it was a great learning experience, you know, for, for an artist. Absolutely. I mean, you get the top 10 Nashville star. Um, did, would you say that that, as far as being a musician, not so much, uh, the performance side of it, but as far as like, you know, just your craft, what did, did you take away from that going forward? Um, I learned, I learned things honestly not to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I came into that with a sense of entitlement, mm -hmm. um, sort of going from playing in bars and then within a year or a year and a half of moving to Nashville, I, I got the opportunity for the show and that's for my personality that was too young for that to happen. So I thought this is it, you know, I've got this thing now and I learned real quick that, that I don't have this thing now, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of took over me and I had to actually step away from, from it for a little bit cause I kind of got to a dark place with me for a while. Oh, I understand that. All right, well, six years later, uh, 2012, you end up with CMT's Next Superstar. Yes. And you actually won that. I did. Uh-huh. Um, they never had another season. You know, I was so good at it. I guess they just thought, <laughs> <laughs> They were like, we're, we're done. We're done with after Matt this Matt Mason has shut us down. <laughs> we, we can't top this. Mm -hmm. um, at least I like to think of it that way. <laughs> but that was great. That was even better um, because I had my head on straight. Mm -hmm. So I got to come in and... And it was it was the for me as a songwriter that was where I got to hone my craft as a songwriter. My roommate for the show was a cat named Wynn Varble, and he's a, he's a big name writer in town. We know Wynn. He's a dear he's, dear friend of he's ours. He's great. Oh, he's wonderful. And so I I learned you know I got to hang out with him, and then he introduced me to different writers in town, and 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 through that like I just I made I met the songwriting community, mm -hmm. which I had never done before, and. So really, between the two, they both had their great experiences, but for but for me as an artist and what I'm looking to do, I, I think I took more away from the CMT show just because I was mentally prepared for it. Mm -hmm. I, I I wanted something out of it, whereas before I was still young and just I didn't 
I, it was more of a party mode than anything, you know. So okay. So the CMT show, like like I said, for me was a was a it was a great catapulting mm-hmm. event for 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 songwriters and, and getting into that world. Well, obviously, you made some really really strong connections. Uh, I mean, Win Varble. I mean, he's got the new you know John Party single out right now. Yeah, Win Varble can't write a bad song. He can't uh, you're, really. You're in great company. Um, so let's talk, now let's go, let's get to your current single, this song that you've written, this one, E? Yes. Right? Um, Good old fashioned murder song. Nothing wrong with murder song. Nothing wrong with murder song. Blues and country, that was built on murder song. So, um, <laughs> talk to us a little bit about E. Um, I wasn't written by my, I didn't write by myself. I actually had two co-writers on that, um, which was a, a girl named Jennifer Zeffinetti and, and, a, and a cat named Kyle Jacobs. And we were at a writing retreat uh, for four days. I'd been invited after the CMT show, you know, I was getting into the songwriting world and I'd been invited to come to, to a four day writing retreat in Kingston Springs, Tennessee, which is just outside Nashville. And f- it was the fourth day, it was the last day we were there. We were all kind of burnt out, you know, you've been writing for four days and, and write a song or two in the morning, song or two in the evening. It's like the last day we're sitting there just staring at each other, like, what are, there's nothing else to write about here. Like, and Jennifer said, I have this song hook that I don't know if you guys would be interested in. And it's called E. And I'm like, what's the idea? She said, well, it's kind of, you know, like your, your tank doesn't beat mine to eat like a gas tank type thing. And then we just started throwing out ideas of, of it could be this, it could be that. I tend to write a little bit darker sometimes. It's kind of my nature of writing. And I thought this could be a great, a great murder story. You know, it could be a great. Uh, Why not? Uh, right. So let's, We're going to call it justice. Considering the subject, it's a justice song. It's a, right? yeah. It's, uh, a, it's about getting It's justice. justified, I guess, in a sense. But so we started writing it when we, we wrote about half of it there and, and we, like I said, we we'd been burnt out from writing too much. So we, we we seen that we had, or what we thought we had, was a was a pretty decent song. So we said, let's step away from this thing for a little bit. We came back a couple weeks later, and we finished it up in Nashville. And I've been out on the road recording, it, or not recording, but out on the road playing it. You know, mm-hmm. since then, and uh, it's kind of taken a little life of its own. Well, what's the story in E? The the story behind the song. There's not a real life story behind it, but the the gist of the song is that you know uh, the the timeless story of a guy coming home a little bit early from from being either on the road or at work or whatever and comes home and um you know finds his wife or his girlfriend or whoever it may be with somebody else you know and and that 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 rage that comes out that that every guy w- would want to do but necessarily can't do because you don't want to go to prison for the rest of your life so we wrote about it instead like this is what i would do <laughs> In this freaking song, this is what I would do, you know. Yeah, you better be glad you're in the song, man. <laughs> better be glad because out, out here in the real world, we have a really intense conversation. Oh man, um, but it, that's I mean that's the gist of the song, and that's kind of the point behind it. It's like this is, uh, you know, we catch up with this guy or, or not catch up with this guy, but it's getting it's getting your justification out for something. Oh, absolutely, the wrongdoing being done to you, I guess. Absolutely, and it's a good old fashioned like cheating revenge song. And uh, if you want to hear it, make sure you call us at Kicks Nine Six. We'll be happy to play it for you. It's called E. Matt Mason is our guest. Where can they find you on the internet? MattMasonMusic.com. Um, all of our social media stuff is under Matt Mason Music, from from Twitter to uh, Facebook, Instagram. Those are the three main socials, I guess. For us, anyway, that's what we use. And YouTube, uh, which is Matt Mason Music 13. Um, Matt Mason Music. I had a Matt Mason Music account on YouTube, and I lost it. I, <laughs> I couldn't log back into it years ago. And I, Anyway, uh, everything's under Matt the Mason Russians Music. The Russians took it. The Russians took it. <laughs> they did. It's yeah. the... Uh, it's but Matt Mason music, day. everything's under, so they okay. can find me. Uh, what about the album? Is the, is the album done, or is it just a single right now? The album is actually done. We've had it out for just a short period of time. It's called The Writer's Collection, uh, Part 1, which is songs that I've written over the last five, six years um, that I've put on. Some of them have been on other projects. Some of them haven't been. But it was it was taking my favorite songs that I've written and putting putting them onto one project of going, mm-hmm. these, are, these are what I think are the best that I've written so I called it the writer's collection me being a writer and mm-hmm. going this is what I enjoy playing this is what I I want people to know me as at least for right now from the stuff I've written if I had to hand somebody a project and they say who are you as an artist I could go here mm-hmm. and that was kind of the thought behind behind putting this project together well, well make sure you look for them online find E it is available like on iTunes. It's like, it's available on good. iTunes, any digital platform. You're um, gonna to want to copy the song, I promise you that. Look for a live performance of Matt elsewhere here on our YouTube channel. Thanks for being here, man. Thanks for having me, Fletcher. Thanks for bringing the it. family. Hi family! Thank you guys for being here. <laughs> it's like I love it when the family comes. It's, I mean every now and again people will bring their dogs. 
I love it. We, I've I had a big dog here one time, and it was really awesome. We had we actually normally travel. We have three dogs. Really? And we we leave one at home because he's a he's a beast, but he's just mean. And our <laughs> other two, we I travel with uh, regularly. Well, next time you come visit, you gotta bring. We will. Okay. We will for sure. We love. Him. Thanks, Matt. Thanks again, man. And we'll see you next time on another artist video blog at kicks96country.com.